Hey folks, Dave Temple here. As you know, my podcast is all about talking to some of the best thriller writers in the world. But now, after nearly two and a half years, I think it's time I toot my own horn. So with that, I'm offering my thriller, The Poser, for sale. This thriller stars Hollywood detective Patricia Pat Norelli, a rookie cop working the overnight beat when one of Hollywood's biggest stars is found dead in her Hollywood Hills home. The only problem, the star just won an Oscar and is found dead only hours later. Now, Pat sees this as a way to forge her own path and muscles her way into the case. Soon, she and partner Detective Stuart Brown find themselves deep inside a complex case with more questions than answers and a ghost of a killer. Now, this isn't my first self-published book, but it's the first one I'm very confident you're going to like. I'm pretty proud of it. And for the rest of this month, you can get the ebook for only $5.95 or the paperback for $13.95. Now, since I do this weekly podcast as a free service, perhaps you'd consider this a way to help out your fellow thriller author. Okay, here's the link davidtemplebooks.com slash books okay there you'll see the poser just click and you're on your way again the link is davidtemplebooks.com slash books otherwise just head over to amazon okay thanks for your support and now on with the show you're saying that she was tortured more an experiment what are you talking about turner one of them got out sir help please help this goes beyond the badge. I missed you in hell, old friend. For blood or justice, season one. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Thriller Zone. I'm your host, David Temple. And today's show is going to be a little bit different. Off the beaten path, I suppose you could say. We're going to combine the best elements of audio, video, graphic novels, thrillers, and podcasts. Hmm, let's see. That would be called For Blood or Justice. This graphic novel has come to life thanks to Scott and Todd, their creators. And on today's show, we're going to dive deep into the world of graphic novels and podcasting. Is it a new combined medium? I think you're going to find out really quickly that it is. Very exciting stuff. And why don't I just shut up and we get into the Thriller Zone. Slight departure from our standard thriller author interview here on the thriller zone but uh, today we're going to be discussing graphic novels and their integration into podcast uh, or aka audio dramas both of which i'm completely obsessed we are here with as you'll see these handsome gentlemen for those watching on youtube todd ness and scott weil mm. yeah i know mm. the cameras cameras eating us up baby you can't get that much <laughs> Man candy in one place, if you tried. <laughs> Hashtag man candy. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, you first of all. Silver Fox yourself. Come on, everybody. I'll, I want to I see that hashtag man candy just start <laughs> ripping around the interweb right now. Web yeah. two and web three. <laughs> all right. Well, welcome to the Thriller Zone. I think we've got our tech issues well in hand and are ready Woo! to roll. Wow. Mm, mm. Wow. First yeah. of all, uh, as, as we mentioned, Todd Niss is the uh, creator, writer, and EP of this. We're going to refer to this a couple of times, but you're really going to be seeing it in a different form later. Blood or Justice is, uh, I, I'm a nut for graphic novels, and this thing is beauty. Now, I'm just going to tease you. You can't actually have this. <laughs> We're going to talk about where it is currently living, which is in the audio realm, along with actor, I should say, and director, and... Um, kind of internet sensation scott <laughs> while scott hashtag man candy while that's yeah. me yeah hey listen uh, let's do this for those who aren't familiar with uh, this somewhat groundbreaking uh medium why don't you guys uh, todd why don't you just jump in here and tell us kind of what uh fboj is and um kind of the gestation for it oh man <clears throat> it was uh about 10 11 years ago that this kind of started. Um, I don't know if I should be proud of that or embarrassed of that fact, but- um, Totally proud. <laughs> that I've stuck with it all this time. Um, it started with the, just kind of the idea of Cotton's character and- Who's his, Cotton? Cotton De La Croix, our main character. Thank you very Scott, much. Yeah. All right. Um, and his quest uh, to seek blood or justice, I won't go into too many details with what he's trying to do. Um, and then it'd be uh, his relationship with Yada. And that's kind of those two came about. 
And but then I thought, it's okay, this has been done probably, you know, what am I gonna do that's different? I mean, the character's a little different. And then I thought, you know, to do something completely unique, I needed to mash this story up. So I took these characters that I would refer to as like characters from an Elmore Leonard novel or a James Lee Burke novel and put them in a John Carpenter or George Romero story. And so therefore <laughs> we've got Dirty Harry meets Dawn of the Dead or, you know, Charles Bronson and Death Wish. Uh, yeah, fighting zombies, but there's no zombies, but there's plenty of uh, creatures. It's creature feature. It's um, a road picture. It's a, a chase thriller. Um, and then at some point I thought, I hate all these stories with the technology and you have to, okay, he's got a cell phone. He doesn't have a cell phone. There's service. There's not service. Let's go back analog days. And I just thought, let's do it before cell phones and GPS and all of this stuff. And I thought that would be more interesting to survive more on your wits than technology. And um, I just was kind of looking through years that might be interesting. And I just came upon 1977. And so 1977, this uh, renegade uh, Texas Marshall is hunting two killers, murderers across Texas and across the border into Mexico, where he ends up uh, trapping them in a, an abandoned factory. And then we discover that the factory is not abandoned and it's actually um, housing a post World War II human experiment lab run by a fugitive Nazi. Wow. Okay. That other, than that, <laughs> other than that, there's nothing going on in this story. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. know, it's just pure family fare, isn't it? I mean, bring the kids. It is. Yep. It Popcorn, is. Yeah. Yeah. candy. It's, it's been compared to uh to Bambi actually a lot, yeah. which is and weird. the Toy Story oh. franchise. Yeah. 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 I, I don't see it, but Toy <laughs> Story on LSD now. Yeah. Honey, I shrunk the kids into Nazis, and that's yeah. that's good too. That's a good one. Yeah. Now, now, Scott, I understand that right, now, so Todd, you're the creator. Uh, uh, Scott, you're a co-creator, uh, director, and uh, you play a small role as uh, agent, special agent. Um, Taylor. 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 Several agent roles. Taylor. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm definitely not a co-creator. Uh, I, Todd, this is all Todd's creation. Um, I, I came on board. Um, I'm, I, I've been a voiceover actor for like 25, 30 years, and then I started directing my own stuff, short films, web series, stuff like that about 10 years ago. And um, so I came on board because I just I, I had just directed comedy, really. And I just, there was just something so wildly unique about what Todd, this world that Todd created that I said, you know, I'm going to put my hat in the ring four and a half years later. Here we are. Um, and so, yeah, from an acting standpoint, uh, yeah, I play Agent Taylor, but I also kind of know, Todd, how many, like 10 probably roles yeah, when it comes down there. to it. Yeah, little roles here. Yeah, because I I, I I cast and directed this thing, the podcast, in the middle of the beginning of the pandemic um, in 2020, and we rec I cast and recorded 65 speaking roles over three months, I think it was, right, Tom? About that, yeah. Yeah, and so I, I, I tapped into my, into my voiceover world and tapped some of the great voiceover actors out there, like um, Eric Bauza, Tara Strong, Maurice LaMarche, Phil Lamar, among many, many, many others. And they all play, as SAG contracts allow, uh, three, most of them play three, three leads each. And I, I wanted to showcase that talent because I still believe that it's some of the best talent in Hollywood are the, the voiceover, uh, the voiceover community. Sure. So when I, I, you know, I play agent Taylor, but, um, you know, I, I can only pull so many favors and ask so many people to do these roles. And so you, you hear me throughout, you hear me throughout. All right. Give me just because, uh, I'm also a voiceover actor, uh, g give me a line as special agent first, and then I want to hear one of your wackiest characters. Do you mind just whipping this no, out? No, no, yeah. no. Uh, uh, who's Taylor? What's, what's Wally's character's name? Wix. Wix. Uh, he's not talking to Wix. He's talking to, uh, oh, he's Turn. talking to, what's his name? He's talking to, to Stephen Weber. Stephen Weber. Uh, Weber's character, what was his name? Oh, uh, junior agent. Uh, junior agent. I need you to get your butt down there. And you find out what is going on. And then you get back to me, but you are not to leave that town. 
So it's he's very he's kind of like old school FBI. He's sure. very by very by the book. Uh, you, you, your voice actually would be great too. Uh, you know, a little bit closer to the mic. You know, it's just that 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 real authoritative old school guy. Um, and then, uh, like in the beginning there's a there's a, a senate hearing going on and uh oh, so like you hear you hear me as as old old ted kennedy, ted ramb- kennedy. rambling on in the background going yeah you, you're telling me mr gettinger that um human experiments have been going on here within the fbi for the last uh, uh five years is that, is that is that what you're saying mr gettinger and then i go oh uh, well yes mr kennedy uh you know it's been uh that, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Dude, enough, that is good. That's dead on too. I it's, love it's that. Enough, it's enough in the background that you know yeah. everyone who knows me. They're like, "Oh, nice Kennedy, nice Kennedy." Yeah. Wife. That was good. <laughs> you know what, though, uh, just to get a little nerdy here, you, you know, you can you can toy with that. I mean, you, I yeah. I bought it right away, so you change the EQ a little bit. You you yeah. know, put a little filter in front of your face or something. But anyway, that's, that's, I just dig that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's fun. So. Now, now I was going to rattle off a bunch of names that uh, some people in the audience may recognize. You, you just did that for me, but is Danny Trejo is in this gig too? Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. One, one yeah of he my plays, favorites. he plays a, a Mexican luchador uh, named El Sangre del Diablo. D- Devil's blood. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, so, so Todd, let's break this down in the world of, pandemic threats and so forth and changing protocols constantly. I mean, I've, I've seen it affect uh, films as we know it today in this entertainment business. Has this kind of been, uh, for lack of a better term, an easier fix uh, because of the way that you have protocols and you can record uh, voices off, you know, as uh, Scott was saying, you could re- record a bank of voices and then mix them later, or is all the thing done you know live on tape and so that would kind of negate the first part of that question does that make sense uh, yeah for sure it was i think a little bit of both i think scott and i weren't really sure what to do we're like are we going to rent gear and send it to people's houses and um who will anybody go to a studio or any studios open i mean it was really a a crapshoot and like scott um and a lot of the professional view artists like and yourself have your own booth um, and they were ready to go. Um, but then, you, you know, Stephen Weber and Wallace Langham, uh, Spencer Garrett, these guys, you know, we had to find places for them to go. And that was Danny, Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. That was a funny one. Um, it was a funny one. But uh, we pieced it together. And I think that's why it took three months, you know, to try to get this. Yeah. Um, and yeah. to Scott's credit, he read, he read against all of those guys and, every character and pulled it off and was able to get those performances we wanted. Uh, but then, was, the, yeah, you know what, Todd, that was, that made it, um, it was good. You know, it, it's, 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 I'm an actor, but I'm a director. And so I was able to, in any one of these remote scenes, as opposed to the, the actors just acting on their own with, with nothing. Yeah. Uh, I was, I was able to give, give them all a scene whoever it was uh you know their home and their booths or their like xander berkeley who's one of the great character actors of all time he's lives in maine and he actually went into their little little town in maine and went into a studio there and so i'm acting against him which was tough he's he's a great actor tough yeah let dude. me jump in here a quick second because i want to drop some of these names because when i was on your website originally and i, and I get to do this because i'm going to throw some uh photos up uh in the youtube version of this show I mean, Zach Grinier, uh, I, I recognize Xander Berkeley, Phil Lamar, Wallace Langham, uh, Stephen Weber, of course. The guy still looks like a million bucks he's, all these years later. Yeah, he's, he he's wildly talented. He's a funny dude. Yeah, funny, and then funny guy. another one, another great actor, and uh, Scott, you're going to love this, Spencer Garrett. There's a guy with a oh, set yeah. of pipes, man. Oh, yeah. Again, another wildly talented. We just kept going. Er- everyone who came on, we'd be like, all right, the bar is really high. So <laughs> I am going to push you really hard. And yeah. because you need, because it's, it's super high. And, and Sarah uh, Clark, where do I know Sarah from? She was in Bosch. She was Bosch's, uh, there you love interest. Yes. Yeah, yes. Who yes. got, who got murdered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she was in 24. She was in twilight. Yeah. yeah. She's wow. awesome too. She's well, married to Xander. She's married to Xander Berkeley. 
Oh, that's so yeah. hilarious. Okay. And so I, I asked when Xander came in, I was like, and it was look, everyone's at home. No one was, no one was out on any sets. And I said, Hey, if, uh, if your wife, Sarah is up for coming in and playing a couple roles, we'd love to have her. <laughs> yeah. Well, S Scott, how come you look like an agent? You look like the a you reminded me of the agent in, um, matrix when I first saw you, and now you look like you're in prison. So I'm just trying to figure <laughs> you well, go yeah. leaving to, uh, yeah. Uh, and I, I've got about 10 more, I've, I've 10 more minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 10 more minutes and then I'm out of here. I don't want to shortchange these others, but you, and we're going to push this later, but you can go to for blood or justice.com and just look at this. I mean, I don't know how you did it. This is just a beautiful gang of uh, talent. And Todd, I want to ask you, you made a comment, uh, almost self disparaging, which I don't think you should, because I think there's a, an ongoing theory. I, I've certainly lived by it. I think you probably live by it. We're probably about the same age is that, you know, it takes about 10 years to make it in Hollywood. So 10 years can be make it in Hollywood. It can be 10 years to make a project in Hollywood. I mean, for those guys, I did three tours of duty out there. So I, I'm very familiar with that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but I say you know, it takes it, it takes what it takes. Right. So but the fact that you had the spark ignite and you hung in there with it, I mean, you, you got to love that. I, it's not in my nature to give up or to no. quit. You know, I got that from my folks. Um, I, there's times I question it. Am I crazy for keeping on this? And um, <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, you know, I, I find every time I go back to it to write something more or to edit something else or to talk about it or to go for artwork, I still love it. I still love this project, you know, and it was 10 years ago. I had several different ideas in my head, notes, and I said, I got to pick one and just stick with it, see it through to the, the brutal end. And if it's either going to make it or it's not. And this was the one. Uh, his, and it, it just has so many things that kind of form so many elements that form my childhood and the Carpenter movies and uh, uh, De Palma movies and all the, the novels I read, the Stephen Kings and the Robert Ludlum and the spy thrillers and Marathon Man and Three Days of the Condor. And I just oh, felt like, God. and there was a while, like, is anybody going to dig this? Or is it just me and my crazy? And everybody seems to dig it. So, but yes, I've stuck with it and thank you. And we'll see if it takes flight. Well, I got to shoot to a direct question. And, and if I'm out of bounds here, just tell me and I'll shut up. But, it, it, you know, being an independent filmmaker myself and having directed uh, and produced and acted as well, I, I know that the one thing you're always thinking about is, A, how am I going to get the money to feed the machine that I want to see happen? Number two, how do I make the money back so that I can do this again? You know? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. Um, how, how, and again, you can tell me to screw off, but how can, how are you going to make money off of this thing? Uh, and I, that may not be the number one objective, but I know that to be able to pull in this kind of talent and, you know, get up the website and get the, and the, and the printing on this is just delicious for crying out yeah. loud. So Thanks, man. that's we, the we million dollar question. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we've, right had, we've had to, we've self-financed it ourselves uh to this point and um uh the podcast will make money through advertising eventually uh we struck a distribution distribution deal with a great company called revolver and uh we're we've got high hopes for larger audiences massive audiences finding us it's a slow burn this one uh we've listened to a lot of the competition out there and I just, we just kind of keep coming back and going, God, man, I just, I, we know it's, it, it's good. It's really good. And our cast is insane. Yeah. Um, I, I was able to get almost everybody to work at Screen Actors Guild deferred rate, uh, which allowed us to bring in this talent. And everyone said, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Explain yeah. to the audience that doesn't know what deferred rate and SAG rules means. Well, um, if I'm going to bring in uh, an actor and I'm doing this as a union gig, which we did, uh, right. we have to pay them a very specific amount of money for this specific kind of contract, which is called a new media contract under the Screen Actors Guild, uh, SAG after a new media contract. And um, what the union, because the union knows independent filmmakers are always beg, borrowing and stealing, right, David? 
And right. you, you do what you can to get this thing done. You just, you know, you're, you're, you're just blood, sweat and tears every single day, 24 hours a day. Sometimes and more tears. Yeah. Sometimes more tears. Yeah. And uh, I just, I, I reached out to a lot of my community of people. I've, you know, I've been around as an actor for 25, 30 years and I know a lot of people and everyone was kind enough to do this as a favor and, and love the material and showed up ready to rock. So we didn't have to pay most of our talent anything up front. And so when this thing starts to make money as a podcast, we pay, we pay our talent immediately. Um, so that's it. And then we, uh, our goal is to turn it into a television series. So we're hoping to get out and start pitching it as a TV show, um, you know, in the next month or so. Okay. So you've just taken my very next question. Great timing. So here's what uh, I had, um, Janish Neumann on, um, uh, a, uh, former KGB, uh, spy, we'll call it for lack of a better term, who is also launching a, uh, a graphic novel, uh, cool. in that, uh, and it's just totally awesome off the charts and we were talking about a similar thing about you know it, it takes so much blood uh, to use your phrase blood sweat and tears to get this thing going uh the medium of graphic novels itself is a changing world it's you know it was comics now it's graphic novels now it's you know it's going to gaming and so forth and now digital downloads infinitely more economically feasible for us creators than perhaps the printed medium like this i can't even fathom here's my point a lot of words to say uh my question being where is it going next so as we were saying, the great thing about a graphic novel is it is a it's a storyboard perfectly uh, delivered to your director to go. These are the shots. Let's yeah. set them up. <laughs> yeah. um, so it, it makes it for an easier sell in Hollywood. I, I think I'm pretty safe in saying that. So TV is the next step, right? That's, That's our the end goal. dream. That's yeah, the end goal. goal. Yeah, we knew when I we started the uh, the graphic novel. Excuse me, that. We weren't Marvel, we weren't DC, we weren't Image, uh, we weren't one of the big guys that um, can pay artists and writers $500 a day, $1,000 a day to work on this stuff. And we knew it was gonna be kind of a hard sell that we're, we're new, we're nobodies. We don't really know what we're doing. We're, doing, uh, we're independent filmmakers, so we kind of know how to tell a story, but we're passionate about it. Um, so let's create this and we'll give it away and see if we can create a fan base and see if people dig it and see if they like our grassroots indie style and spirit. And hopefully they, you know, they kind of latch onto that. We're the anti-hero. Uh, we're not superheroes. Uh, although I love all the Marvel movies, but we didn't want to do that. Yeah. So that's kind of where it came from. And, and we could tell a story that took place. That was a period piece that had giant set pieces and creatures and blood and shootouts and, you know, millions of dollars worth of uh, production value, we could distill yeah. down to a graphic novel. And then when I met Scott, it was, you know, he was kind of over the same mind. We thought, wow, this podcast, you know, this was what, four years ago, four and a half years ago when podcasting obviously was around, but it was still relatively under the radar. Yeah. Uh, this is another potential great way to tell this story that we don't have to raise to millions we, of dollars. And prove what we have too. So now we've got yeah. a graphic novel and we've got the podcast. So I feel like, you know, the, the next step is, you know, we walk in and you pitch it and you're like, Hey, look, you want to see what this thing's all about? It's here you go. You know, we, we've, we've got it and we've got it with a great cast. So you can, you can look at it visually. Uh, and we're also in the process of creating a really interesting mashup of the graphic novel and the podcast uh, together. But the, uh, have you worked numbers, curious as an indie filmmaker myself, have you worked numbers of what you think, let's just say uh, an episode, and are you looking at uh, mm -hmm. kind of the 44 minute, uh, a little bit longer? You're looking at the uh, Walking Dead kind of look feel, or are you talking about more CGI, la la la? I, uh, I don't. Todd, I don't see it CGI, do you? No, no. I, I just being old school, you know, I'd rather have practical effects and sure. makeup effects and and a la Walking Dead. Yeah. I'd shoot 44, this thing, I'd shoot it in 35 millimeter personally. 
Um, of course you would, because it looked fantastic. Because it would yeah. look good. Man. And it yeah. would be so inexpensive, right, Scott? You know, it's not bad. <laughs> uh, one of my buddies from college is a guy named Steve Bellamy, who's head of uh, Kodak Film. And Steve's done a great job of, of really keeping film vibrant. And obviously, A-list director, a lot of A-list directors still shoot in film. But um, I, I'm hoping that uh, Kodak will, will partner with us when we're ready. So we'll see. We do have a, a pilot script uh, as part of our pitch package and pitch tech and all that. Yeah. Uh, what it's going to cost, I, I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's period piece. So period piece always, you know, it's always a little bit more expensive because, you, you know, yeah. everything. Well, Although it's, it's middle of nowhere. So we could shoot this in the middle of the desert in Texas or New Mexico yeah. or. I was going to say it's 77 year I graduated high school. Yeah. And uh, hey, hey, so hey. the period could really be boiled down to, to a couple of vehicles and wardrobe, yeah. not right. to tell you your job, but I'm like, especially with this Texas, Mexico or a, uh, yeah, Southern Texas yeah. thing is couldn't be. So you got nine episodes. If you go if, and folks, we're going to put this up on the screen for blood or justice.com. You'll be able to see it in its entirety on revolver podcast.com but here's the question you got nine episodes currently i listened to uh, half of them what how many do you foresee is is nine the full tease and then you're going to wait for the next step of money raising and so forth or will you go ahead and keep the episodes going uh, yeah that's a good question <laughs> um I'm full of good questions baby and they're, they're, no, they're, they're so cheap sorry. Too. yes the 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 reality is we probably need to raise some money to to the rest of it we have plotted out five six seasons worth of uh, probably 12 to 16 episodes per season. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is, if you get invested in the story, it's got a long way to go. There's lots of twists and turns. There's lots of backstory. There's lots of offshoot stories. So it can go and go. Um, but the, the brass tacks of it are, yeah, we, Scott and I have called in about every favor we can to get this far, um, financed it this far. And um what it's going to take to make season two is we're, we're not quite there yet. Yeah. I applaud no. you guys. Cause I know how hard this is. And uh, you know, when you're moving through life on a wing and a prayer and you got these great ideas and you're just yeah. knuckling it every day uh, and you, and you, and you're going back to some of the same friends and they see you come and going, Oh geez, here comes another freebie. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> I admire you. And you know, it, it, tenacity is what it takes besides your talent and drive and so forth. So Thanks, man. Applause. Yeah. yeah. You no, know, I've, I've found, I mean, you probably have too as an independent filmmaker. I've found that my acting community is a really supportive community when it comes to personal passion projects um, because everyone has them and not everyone gets them to the point where you actually do it. And so I've found that, you know, most of my friends who are all working actors and have been for a long time, they're like, yeah, man, let's do it. Well, and, and especially in a case like this, I mean, folks, you're going to go to this website and you're going to see these photos and you're going to uh, headshots and you're going to know automatically you're going to start rattling off all the TV shows and yeah. any series that you've seen. You're like, wow, this is legit. You know, and these are not just some local high school play uh, people. This, these are head theater. Yeah. We've, yeah. Yeah. We've got, we've got, we've got, uh, we've got all the working actors in there. That's it's character actors from across the spectrum. It's cool. It's really so cool. what haven't I asked that you would love for my audience to know about on the thriller zone? I mean, we're talking about great media podcasts, thriller novels, thriller screenplay writers, directors, actors. I mean, we're covering all the gamut, but what haven't I covered that would you want to really make sure? I hope these guys walk away knowing this. It's very, very, very film-like. Um, you know, it's not, the pace of it is not like this. Sure. The story is very deep. Uh, Todd also did all the sound mix on it as well. He's a very, very talented guy. Thank God he saved us a lot of money too. Um, and so when you put your headphones on and you put some good headphones on, you are going to be immersed into this world that Todd created. And we've had so many people get lost in our show. And I hope that 
you all are able to get lost in our show too, because it is immersive. And you know what? Sit back into it and you will not be, you will not be unhappy. Awesome. And to that point, Scott would, you would tell the actors say, okay, we're just going to start off with a wide shot yeah. and then we're going to slowly push in, you know, and then we're going to be in close and then you're going to get open the car door and get out of the car and you're going to walk across the lawn and you're going to go inside. And we tried to really feel that, feel that space. So you, and you, and you felt it and every, every location has a character to it, you know, has a feel and different little sounds and, yeah, we put a lot of effort. We, it's very visual for a it bre- it podcast. Yeah. yeah, you know, what, David, when we were editing it, we actually had to let the first editors go um, because it was it was hard for Todd and I to get on the same for them to get on the same page with us, um, and because it needed to breathe more, and that's it. Just it just took a while to get there. That's all. Yeah, yeah, and the score we get and the score get our yeah. uh, composer. Ballard killer job yeah so for... good. yeah his score ken bauer I, i've worked with ken ken's been kind enough to do a lot of stuff for my uh independent films that i've done and he's god he's talented and that everything he did for us in this is spot on and yeah. and it raises the hair on your neck i, I would go through the script and say okay from uh from the, the minute two until minute six and a half i need a tense low rumble <laughs> Yeah, it's like you want a four and a half minute tense tense scene in the score. Like, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, and there's a, and then there's an eight minute one, you know, and then there's and he would just and he he killed it. He killed it every yeah. time. Yeah, and for the people, for the folks in our audience who uh, understand this world of uh, directing and filmmaking and TV and series, etc., not to be uh, or to be media uh, channel agnostic, is that they get it, you know, and and everyone knows that score enhances everything like i was watching uh, the new season of uh ozark last night oh is it up mm-hmm. yep. oh yeah just dropped <laughs> and yeah just dropped and the 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 sound design on this thing with those little tink 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 you know the pieces yeah. of sound that really are kind of um all into themselves and they're not really uh, uh they're not systematically orchestral in any way, shape, or form, but they're kind it's of like an, it's like another character. It's a part. Yeah. It's part of the story, right? And yeah. that's what I love it. And it's so yeah. unique to that show, and it sets its own tone by just being slightly, you know, off yeah. center. Yeah. And um, so that's key. And number two is someone was asking me the other day about, hey, does it really matter about the sound? And I'm like, let me let me tell you a little something. In my opinion. <sighs> People will put up with bad visuals if they can hear it well, but they won't put up with bad audio to be able to see it beautifully. So, and it's perfect for podcast and audio drama because in this, and you're right, Scott, uh, the difference between listening online and then downloading it and listening to the headphones, vastly different. And you really are, especially if you close your eyes, you're immersed in that world. And I applaud you guys for that. Oh, thanks, David. Thank Thank you you very much. Yeah, Todd, uh, Todd did a, ridiculously good job of mixing it so thank you right one other uh discussion we had early on was uh how long to make it it would would it not we had a friend who just said well i don't think anybody will listen to a longer than five minute piece it's like five minutes can we do five do i want to do five minutes it should be 12 minutes and then at, at some point we just said no it needs to be like half an hour it's no, been half yeah. an hour and then other people would say, well, you should got to have a narrator. How are you going to walk people through this story? You know, if it's going to be cinematic. Like, no, we don't, we don't want a narrator. We want to, we want the audience to feel their way through it. And, and yeah. that was a challenge, but I, a, a fun challenge to me. You know, Todd, I, I could see maybe that rationale, that thinking being uh, legit uh, pre pandemic, but uh, I think pandemic has changed the way we mm. digest material. So I'm thinking to myself, the way that I'm listening to podcasts now and audio books and just, you know, we're doing one or two different things while ingesting that. I, I think we need to be sure to give the audience the credit that they're due, that they'll, that they got that, you know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You don't need to. You don't need to spoon feed me or tell me what's happening. All I got to do is jump in it with two feet and start swimming. I got it. You know, yeah. there's there's so much material out there that is dumb and panders um, and says, "Here, let let me take your hand." Oh, you know what? I'm going to take both of your hands. Yeah, 
Well, we're going to put some credits down below uh, on the website so that people can find out some of the people behind the scenes, like the pencil and inks and so forth, because I love to give those guys credit, too, because that's so much yeah. of the magic, especially when you're talking about the uh, graphic novel itself. But if you'd like to learn more, folks, forbloodorjustice.com, you can follow them on Twitter, as I do, at Blood or Justice, and then you can go to both Facebook and Instagram at For Blood or Justice. This has been fun, guys. Todd Ness and uh, Scott Weil, uh, really appreciate the time. And uh, man, I wish you guys humongous luck. Thank you, thanks, Dr. Dave. Temple. Yeah, thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. It's been fun. Thanks for yeah. having us. really appreciate it. Absolutely. Let's do it over cocktails next time. Keep your uh, golf game. Keep your golf game going, and maybe I'll come down there and kick your butt on the course someday. Uh, challenge <laughs> uh, accepted, sir. So let's let's do it. Let's do it. I'm in. Challenge accepted, sir. Um, I was going to say too. I'm, I was as I was listening. I, was, I I wanted to say, God, guys, if you needed any more extra voices in any way, shape, or form, let me come play in the sandbox for free because I just hell like, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe not the free part, but uh, really, you know, get in there with you guys. Thanks, man. No, uh, we we get to that. We get to that next season. You're uh, you're in there. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you once again for joining us on the Thriller Zone. Thanks for having us, David. Thanks for how fun we're Todd and Scott, right? For blood or justice dot com, the website, the graphic novel and so much more. Okay, let's talk about next week. Amelia Namark has a new book called Behind the Lie, which happens to drop on my birthday. So what a great birthday present. It's a novel that, uh, according to some people say, for readers of Harlan Coben, you're going to love this. It's cram packed with suspense. What else do you need but more of Behind the Lie? That's next week right here on another episode of The Thriller Zone.